So Jeff, I hear that in the middle of your science studies, you studied theology. Why? Why did you do that? And yeah, that's, that's a, an interesting story, I guess. I was headed to doing um, a combined um, MD and PhD, so medicine and um, bio biological research, and that's where my undergraduate trajectory was, was headed. And, um, but, you know, I, I felt progressively uncomfortable about that as it came time to commit to one of those programs. And um, to make a long story short, I, I went off to a retreat. The speaker was a president of a seminary, and he said, I think you should consider seminary because it'll give you a, a good uh, foundation for whatever else you do later in your life. And, well, I thought he was rather bonkers. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I went away and thought and, and prayed about that. And... Um, that's exactly what I did. I ended up going to seminary, and um, it was very helpful to me. I, I learned a lot of um, the basics of how to think about what the Bible seems to be saying. Um, I learned a lot of uh, theology, some philosophy. That was really very helpful for me. And, um, and I, I think it, it molded my way of thinking about the world as I uh, ended up then... Um, after two years of and getting my Master of Divinity degree, going back and doing a PhD in biophysics. So um, I, I think it was pretty formative for me in, in launching me in the right direction and not thinking that I should separate um, being a scientist from being a Christian, that those were sort of the two halves of my brain and that I should <laughs> sever the corpus callosum and uh, that those two sides of my life should never talk to one another. So how does that work in practice now as a, as a practicing scientist? How has that foundation in theology affected your science now? Yeah, so my science. Well, you know, I, I, I guess um, I, I'm trying to find ways to think about how science and, and faith ought to interrelate in a, in a general way for sure. So, you know, I think every time that I see something cool in a microscope, I'm going, wow, that, that is amazing. Um, and and I, I feel that sense of excitement for how um, uh, God has made the world. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that general sense. But I think in a, in a more specific sense, I am trying to think about, um, are there touch points in my teaching and in the uh, wider context in which I do my research, which happens to be on embryos, uh, thinking about that. and. Um, uh, from a Christian context. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I think I'm committed to working out what the implications are of science for my faith. Mm -hmm. In what ways does it challenge what seems to be coming through from the Bible and, and how should I think about that? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, um, I don't know. What about you? You've, you've done a lot of work with uh, Christians in science and students um, you know, how does that play out for yeah, you? I'm kind I mean, of curious to hear about that. A lot of what you're saying resonates with my experience. I've, um, I've always seen myself as a whole person and not wanted to separate my faith from, from my science. And, and I see the two coming together naturally. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that I'm a scientist in the first place was the belief that um, God's made the world, so it must be a great thing to study. And, and so for, for me, the two, the two fit together. And... My involvement in Christians and Science is great because it's helpful to um, give me opportunities to, to think about these things further and um, I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, very similar in some ways, um, but I've not done any formal theology, which is why I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing your experience of, of that formal study. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes formal th theological study can be do more harm than good, frankly. <laughs> you know, you get, you get kind of bogged down in the minutia mm -hmm. of theological studies. Um, so, you know, <laughs> there are pitfalls and some minefields there to avoid. Uh, you know, I think one of the great things about the UK is that there's this culture of encouraging people to do crossover thinking, um, much more than in the States, I would say. So, you mm -hmm. know, I come over here and I, I, I interact with people over here and I feel, in some ways, I feel like I'm coming home. Mm. Um, I feel uh, intellectually much more comfortable. So, uh, you know, I... I'm a bit green with envy uh, yeah. with, the, with the way you guys do this uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I find that pretty, pretty cool, pretty encouraging. Yeah. Well, I guess that, that, that cross-discipline um, cross thinking is, is part of my research scientifically as well, and yours as well, in terms of, of biophysics and physics and biology. And 
And for me, that's something I find exciting, working with different kinds of scientists. Um, do, do, what role do you see for physics in, in the embryology that you study? Oh, physics. You know, I wanted to be a physicist, right? I, well, <laughs> I took German in high school because I wanted to be a physicist, and all these really smart physics guys um, uh, spoke German. And um, I ended up getting a German degree because that was just fun, I, I discovered. But, um, you know, I, I, I really wasn't good enough in math to be a professional physicist. That's what I realized when I took electromagnetism. Couldn't uh, do those... Uh, integration problems and spherical <laughs> coordinates worth a darn. So I, you know, uh, but uh, later uh, I, I got a, a biology degree, a zoology degree as an undergraduate, but then when I went to Berkeley, I think one of the things that really intrigued me about biophysics there was they were broadly thinking about how can you take physical science on the one hand and biological science on the other and um, bring those together. Can you use physical science to study biological phenomena and I was interested in embryos, you know, there's all kinds of physics stuff happening in embryos, you know, forces, there are uh, things that are happening with the cytoskeleton, and the things inside of a cell that allow it to move, or uh, there's just a lot of deep physical principles mm -hmm. going there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was glad to get back to some physics um, a, a, as a PhD student. Now, I was on the biology side for sure, but it seems like you're more on the physics side, so tell me how that plays out for you, because I'm uh, kind of yeah, curious about that. Yeah, in, in some senses, I, I've come at it from the opposite, opposite end, really. So I came, came at it from a, a physics background. Um, my first degree was in physics, but I'm excited, to, as you know, about cells moving and trying to describe um, how the, the mechanisms work, how cells are generating forces. Um, and so I approach it in some ways from a, a perspective of materials physics and um, but I'm a theoretical physicist so particularly using the language of mathematics and using tools from um, using computers to model systems but um, I in order to do what I do I have to simplify the problems hugely and I think that's a, the biggest challenge I think in in bringing physics to biology that you you have to work out what details you can forget and simplify and what things you need to keep in so that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I think for me that's one of the challenges um, in, in using physics to study biological systems. Um, in, in terms of theoretical physics, we, we're used to simplifying the real world in you know, order to describe it. I think that drives it. biologists crazy sometimes, right? Because they, they feel like yeah. sometimes the physicists or mathematical modelers are oversimplifying. Yeah. You know, conversely, I can't get people in my lab to, they run away screaming from equations, right? So, yeah. I, you know, yeah. trying to, to bridge that gap, I think, is pretty challenging. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, um, I don't know. I think, there's a, uh, I think the future is going to see a lot more um, importing of physical science approaches to studying the kinds of things I care about. So, you know, I'm kind of excited to see where that goes. Um, you know, we're trying to do some collaborating with a guy who does some continuum mechanics. This is this, mm -hmm. you know, this whole idea that of modeling solids in a particular way. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of an armchair physicist at this <laughs> point doing, doing some of this. But, you know, I think we're, um, it, I think it's pretty clear that there is this convergence of uh, physics and, and biology in, in pretty exciting ways. And, yeah. Uh, the tools have become much more powerful to do all of this. So, yeah, um, the technological advances in yeah. microscopy and things like that really help. Yeah, I computing think. power is all kinds of things yeah, that yeah. you just couldn't do stuff in the old days. I mean, in the yeah. Stone Age, right? We were still rubbing sticks together to make <laughs> fire in those days, but um, things are pretty exciting now. So. Yeah, I think it's a really exciting um, time for biological research and for for biophysics because of all the. Um, all, the th all the things we've got at hand now to use to study these things that we didn't have before, it's very exciting. But also I think there's lots of things to be done at the interface between the subjects that haven't been done before because people haven't thought of working together at that inf interface bef before quite so much. And I think as we work together with the two subjects and different people from different backgrounds, I think we're going to see lots of exciting things in the future. It's my, uh, my hope anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, where I am, I think we, we have these silos, right? We don't really interact across disciplines as well as we would like, even mm. though I'm a block away from the, the physics department. There's mm. just something about that geographical barrier that, I don't know, is, is a challenge. So, you know, I'm glad yeah. there are people like you out there who are 
um, reaching out from the physics side and um, yeah, I think it is a question of reaching out from both sides. And uh, I've got a colleague who says the key is coffee. And uh, the key if is we coffee. I can relate to that. Yeah. You know, if we have well positioned <laughs> cafes and yeah. coffee areas, then we're all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know, the best way I was able to interact with my uh, supervisor when I was a PhD student was to uh, I would pick the espresso cafe furthest away from our lab, and we would walk there and oh. back, and I would get in my interaction. <laughs> Then that was really the main way that I was able to talk to him. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the Newton Institute in Cambridge, which is an institute for mathematics, they uh, um, they have a coffee machine there, and the people there seem to have the motto that uh, um, mathematics it only comes out from uh, taking mathematicians plus coffee, and then that equals new mathematics. <laughs> yeah, it definitely works for me. <laughs> it works for biology and physics as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>